Welcome to Learn Create Sew. Today's tutorial is going to be just a little bit different. I mentioned in a previous video that I was learning how to crochet and getting back to that craft and I've been having a lot of fun with it. I was about to start my next sewing project when I had a thought that other people may be struggling with this magic circle as much as I did. So today I'm going to go through uh, some of the pitfalls that I had when I was making the magic circle and how I overcame those. So when I was first learning how to make the magic circle, it was a real struggle. I tried, tried again, I probably made a dozen. Um, and I watched video after video and I just couldn't get it. I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. So finally, after a lot of trial and error, I was finally able to get it down. So I'm gonna show you the different components of the magic circle. I'm gonna relate it back to the stitches that you probably already know. And I'll show you how I learned uh, to conquer the magic circle and hopefully you can as well. Uh, if you don't need a lot of the review and a lot of the examples that I'm gonna show you, you can skip to the section where I actually construct the magic circle. And there are chapter sections linked in the description below. So we're gonna review the different aspects of the single crochet, how that single crochet looks when you're going around a ring, and then how to construct the ring yourself, which will create your magic circle. So let's get started with our single crochet. Since we're going to be using single crochet as the component of our magic circle today, let's remember the basics of the stitch. When you do your single crochet, you identify the Vs that are created from your previous stitches. You take your hook and insert it under both sides of the V. You then yarn over and pull up a loop. You yarn over again and go through both loops. Let's see that one more time. Again, you find the next V Go under both sides of the V, yarn over, pull through, and pull up a loop. Then you yarn over again and pull through both loops. We basically use this same process when we're making our magic ring, except we are crocheting around a circle. When you crochet a magic circle, you're basically crocheting around a ring or a loop. If you've never done that before, that can be a good place to start before you actually try making the magic circle. So today I'm going to be using a hairband for my loop. And so I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So it'll help you understand the magic ring just a little better. So first let's attach the yarn to our ring. So I'm just gonna make a slip stitch and I like to attach the slip stitch to the ring. So I placed the short end of the yarn over the long end and I'm gonna put my ring on top. I'm gonna to fold the yarn over and pull through my working yarn. And now my slip stitch is attached to my loop. So now I'm gonna get the proper hold on my yarn so I have good tension. And since I'm going to be making a single crochet, I'm gonna chain one first. When you crochet around a loop, a couple things that you often see is crocheting the tail at the same time. So you have to hold the tail off to the side and you actually stitch around that. Another thing that you do when you crochet around a ring is that you treat the ring like your stitch. So Remember when we did the single crochet and we inserted our hook into the stitch and then pulled up a loop? We're doing the same thing here, except for the ring is our stitch. So you take your hook and you place it into the ring. Then you yarn over and pull up a loop. And you'll see that you now have two loops on your hook. Then you yarn over again and you pull through both loops. And that's your first single crochet. Now, I want you to take a look at this, uh, one beginner to another. This does not look pretty. 
This does not look anything like all those videos I watched. So what is going on? Well, I noticed what happens when you single crochet around a loop is that your stitches slide a lot. They move around and they move down and over. And so sometimes your stitches don't look so pretty. So you may have to move them around to find that nice V shape that's your stitch. Also, mine tend to be pretty far apart and spaced out, which is not what I wanted at all. So after I'm done with my stitch, I have to slide those stitches together to make them look the way I want them to. It doesn't just happen, that's a skill. So don't think because your stitches don't look pretty that you're doing anything wrong. It just takes practice to get them to look nice and even like you often see. So let's try that one more time. So when you stitch through a ring, the ring is your stitch. So you take your hook and you go through the ring, which is your stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll notice how things are twisting and I've noticed that that's kind of hard to avoid. Then you yarn over one more time and you pull through both loops. Again, you can see how spaced out my stitches got. Um, Cause I'm just beginning, this is a hard thing to master. So I'm gonna slide my stitches back over so that they're together. I'm gonna make sure that my stitches are arranged nicely so I can see my V's. There's one, two V's, those are my two stitches. And let's try one more time. Go through your stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over again and pull through both loops. There's all that spacey business that's not supposed to be there. So gently guide your stitch back to where you want it to be. Check to make sure they're in order and push your stitches up if you need to. And there's one, two, three stitches. So I now have three stitches around my ring. So we're gonna use the same technique when we do our magic circle, except we're going to create the circle. So let's see if we can do this. So let's go ahead and start on the magic circle. I'm gonna begin by creating the loop. What I found would happen a lot of times when I first started the magic circle is that I made the tail too short and then I would run out of yarn or I'd lose it while I was in the middle of working. So I like to keep the yarn tail pretty long, about six to eight inches, and then I can always trim it off later. So I'm gonna pinch it about six to eight inches away from the end. And then I like to pinch the yarn between my forefinger and my thumb. I watched a lot of different ways on how to begin the magic circle and this one's my favorite. So you take your yarn and place it over your first two fingers. And you kind of want to make an angle because we're going to create an X. So I go over my first two fingers, under, and then over the top. I really like this method because it gives it a good tension to work with because I'm holding yarn in two places here with my thumb and with my pinky. So let me show you that one more time. Again, keep a long yarn tail. Pinch the yarn between your thumb and your first finger. Lay the yarn on top of the first two fingers. Go under. Go over the top, creating an X. And now let's go ahead and use this to make our loop. I'm gonna take my crochet hook and I'm gonna slide it under the first strand of yarn here. So this was the first yarn I laid down, so I'm gonna go under that piece right there. It's the first piece of yarn that's on my middle finger. And I'm gonna lift the hook up just a little so I can go over the piece of yarn that's behind it. And I'm gonna hook that piece of yarn and pull it down. This will create a little loop on my hook. So you can now see that I have one loop of yarn on my hook. And now I'm gonna angle my crochet hook back towards my working yarn. 
So let's see that one more time. So I have my grip on my yarn. I'm gonna go under the first piece of yarn right here. I'm gonna turn my hook to grip the yarn that's above it and pull it down, creating a loop on my hook. Then turn your hook to face your working yarn. So you can see I've got a loop on my hook now. Now I'm going to yarn over with my working yarn and make a chain. Now the reason I like this method so much is because my working yarn is right here, right there, and it's all ready and snug. So I'm just gonna slide my hook underneath that working yarn to yarn over and go ahead and pull that through my loop to chain one. Right there. And we've made the loop for our magic ring. So let's see what this looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and release my loop. This right here is my working yarn that's heading back to my skein of yarn. This here is my thread tail. Remember I kept it pretty long. And then this is my circle. This is my ring that I'm gonna be stitching into. Now my fingers are pretty skinny um, and so I find I like to have the loop just a little bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stretch this just a bit. So I have a little bit bigger loop to work with when I'm doing my stitches. Now you don't have to do that. If you like working with it tiny, that's just fine. But I find I need a little bit more space to work with. So pull that out just a little bit if you need to. And let's go ahead and get started. So just like we worked our stitches into the hair tie, we're gonna be working our stitches into this ring. Now, uh, I found that one of the most helpful things for me and one of the hardest to figure out was how to actually hold this ring. Depending on how I held it, I would have more or less success when I was making my magic circle. So I'm gonna hold this loop in two places. I'm gonna hold on this side and this side. So I'm gonna use both hands to actually hold the ring as I work. And I'm also going to make sure that I have good tension on my working yarn the whole time. You also want to check to make sure that your thread tail is going up around the top of the loop here. This is what we're going to be working our stitches over. And it's really important that we do work over that thread tail. So when I hold uh, the loop on this side, I'm actually gonna hold the thread tail as well to make sure that stays in place. So first I'm gonna get some tension on my working yarn here and you can uh, wrap your yarn however you normally do to get a good tension on your yarn. And so I've already got a good grip on the ring over here next to my hook, so I'm gonna hold it right here. And with my other hand, I'm gonna grip it down on the other side and I'm gonna make sure I've got that thread tail in my grip. So you can see I'm really keeping a good shape on that ring. I don't want to lose that shape. I also found it really helped me when I had a good tension on there and that ring wasn't just flopping around. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make stitches into this ring. Remember, we're gonna stitch right over top here where our yarn tail is. And this ring will act like our stitch. So I'm gonna take my hook and I'm gonna go into my stitch just like I'm making a single crochet. So I'm gonna go into my stitch and I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And you should now have two loops on your hook. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops. Now what I find happened to me a lot was that my stitches got really loose and really kind of bubbly because my yarn tail actually started going through the stitches and getting caught. So if you gently grip the base of your stitch and slide it towards your hook, it will stay in a better position and it will look a lot nicer. So you don't really wanna pull it hard, but just gently slide it back towards your hook. And then you can usually see your stitch. So I have my working yarn right here on my hook and then below that, I have my first single crochet. 
One thing I found really helpful was marking this first stitch. When we make our magic circle, we're gonna use six stitches in our ring, and we're gonna close it by going back into our first stitch. And I had so much trouble finding that first stitch, so I'm actually going to mark it. So again, the working yarn is on the hook, so we don't count that. But if you find the V that's right below that hook, put your marker under both sides of that V, right there. And that way when we close our magic circle, we know exactly where to close it. We know exactly what stitch to go back into. And this was really helpful when I was first figuring out how to do this magic circle. Okay, so stitch one is done. I have my marker, I'm ready to keep going. So just as before, I'm gonna grip it with both hands. So I've got it gripped here next to my hook, and I've got it gripped here, and I've got a good tension. So I'm gonna do my next single crochet. I'm gonna go into my stitch, into my ring, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So you should now have two loops on your hook. Yarn over, and pull through both loops. One, two. And if you're less than perfect like I am when I'm doing my crochet, it may look really messy and twisty and not at all like you want it. Um, and that's because things slide around. So grip the base of the stitch that you just did. Gently slide it back to your hook. So I'm holding here on my ring, I'm gonna gently slide that stitch back towards my hook until it looks nice and right next to the other and until I can see the two V's right below my hook. So here's my working yarn, second stitch, first stitch. So I've got one, two V's right below my hook. So I've done one, two stitches into my loop. I need six. So let's keep going. Get a good grip, go into your loop, yarn over, and pull up. You should have two loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through both loops. If it's spaced out and messy, grip the base of that stitch and pull it back towards your hook. Make sure all your stitches are lined up and you should have one, two, three V's below your hook. So here's my working yarn, one, two, three stitches in my loop. I've got to do three more. Into the loop, yarn over, up, yarn over, and pull through both. Gently grip the base of your stitches and pull towards the hook. You should have one, two, three, four stitches. Into the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through both loops. Gently slide your stitches. One, two, three, four, five. One more. Into the loop, yarn over and up, yarn over and go through both loops. One, two, grip the base of your stitches and gently slide. And we should have one, two, three, four, five, six V's in our loop. So we've done all of our stitches and now we're gently going to pull the yarn tail to close our loop. And what I found happened sometimes when I pulled that yarn tail is all of my nice stitches that I have would get all twisty and spin around. Um, and to prevent that, you can just lay this flat and gently hold it with your finger and pull your yarn tail. 
and then as you do that they won't flop all around and you can pull it until it's nice and closed. The next step is to do a slip stitch to close the ring. Now this is where I really struggled because I couldn't see where to do that stitch. So because we put the stitch marker in the beginning, I know exactly where I have to go. I have to go under these two sides of the V in order to close my ring. Uh, you can also count your V's backwards. So here's my working yarn on my hook. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches, six V's right below my hook. So you go in the sixth one from the hook. Um, that was still really hard for me to see. That's why I really like having uh, the stitch marker. So I'm gonna move my tail out the way. And then sometimes if my stitches are really tight, I like to kind of wiggle that stitch marker in there to give myself some space. And then I'll take out the stitch marker, keeping an eye on where it was. And I'm gonna do a slip stitch right there. So I'm gonna remove my stitch marker. And I'm gonna go under, this was my first stitch here, this is right where my stitch marker was. And I'm going to insert the hook under both sides of that V. Now this can sometimes be a little tricky depending on how tight your stitches were. But you can see it's going under both loops of the V. Yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. And we've just closed our magic circle. So now you may think, oh yay, my magic circle's done, I'm good to go. Um, for me, I wasn't. After I made my magic circle, I still kept making mistakes um, because I would miscount my stitches. So that first stitch, the one that we went into just now, um, that stitch is no longer one of our working stitches. So when you count the six stitches on your magic loop or on your magic circle, count from below your hook. So here's my hook, my working yarn. The slip stitch that we just did is now our sixth stitch. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. This little guy that used to be our first stitch is no longer a stitch that we use. So when I've got my working stitches, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I found it really helpful before I started um, to identify the six stitches that I'm using. This itty bitty little one right there, my former six stitch is no longer one I use. I use the slip stitch that covers it instead. So if your next step says something like, um, crochet two single crochets into each stitch, which it often does if you're increasing, you don't go into this little one right here. You go into this one that's next to it because the slip stitch we just made covers up that stitch. So don't use that one, use this one, and then we'll go under the two Vs. So now when you use your magic circle, make sure you identify your six stitches first. So I'm gonna go under the next two sides of the V, and follow my pattern with whatever it says. And I often like to uh, put another stitch marker right after my first stitch to help know that this was the beginning of round two. So I hope that tutorial was helpful to you and I hope you have better luck with the magic circle than I did. So I hope to see you back with Learn Create Sew at our next video and happy sewing and happy crocheting until then.